G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for yet another trade update. This is a, a part of the weekly update process that I've been doing. Obviously, I did one not too long ago when I got back from Greece, and today we are just going to rattle off a few more that have come through this week. Won't be a long video. Obviously, the news has been a little bit drier, but certainly here to offer some updates on some of the stories uh, since the last video I've done. So I'm going to talk about six to eight plays in this video I haven't actually counted, but in the interest of keeping this video short and concise for you, I will crack straight into it. So there has been a little bit of an update update with respect to the Tom Dode situation and it has been newly reported that uh, the Pies are the latest team to express interest in Tom Dode. So if you've missed all the action, essentially Tom Dode wants to say the Adelaide Crows. He's obviously coming off an ACL and in a contract season and this is a point for him at which his contract value is relatively low when a player has just done an ACL. So what Tode is looking for is some extra years, some extra security. It's been reported, we have to take it on face value, that Adelaide haven't quite been able to offer a satisfactory offer, hence his interest in potentially moving. I know he's met with Brisbane, but the latest link is that Collingwood have entered the race for him as well. And it has been reported that the Pies do see him as a potential Jeremy Howe replacement. Now, Tom Dode is not going to be playing football likely in the first half of next season, but Jeremy Howe turns 34 next year. So adding a much younger and tall and versatile option in Tom Dode will be a pretty good move for the Pies if they can pull it off. Personally, you know, I think Dode is worth the risk, both from Adelaide perspective and Collingwood, to be honest. I don't know how much of this is contingent on Grundy leaving Melbourne because that might relinquish Collingwood's responsibility to pay for Grundy. I'm not too sure if that is a factor here, but nonetheless, uh, long story short, Tom Doday is still wanting to stay at Adelaide, but Brisbane and Collingwood are certainly in the mix, and uh, I personally just think Adelaide need to commit to him. He's a quality young player in an area of positional need, and he wants to stay at the club, but I think it would be bad business to let him go. But obviously, I'm not the one dealing with the actual numbers here. Then we'll talk a little bit about an update for uh, North Melbourne's Ben Mackay, who's worst kept secret, has been leaving the club for some time. Uh, the update that I have for you, I guess, is that the Sydney Swans have pulled out of the race for Ben Mackay's services, and it is now likely to become one of Hawthorne or Essendon that he ends up at next year. So it is unclear, obviously, why Sydney have pulled out of the race. Uh, I would hazard a guess that it may have something to do with uh, Brody Grundy, because obviously if Brody Grundy's heading there, suddenly that $800,000 a year for Ben Mackay, which is probably over his actual value anyway, seems a little bit less palatable. So it's likely to become one of Hawthorne or Essendon who uh, obviously are going to have a little bit of money to spend as well. I can see Essendon's uh, desperation to sign someone like Ben Mackay. They've been long linked to him. In fact, I think they were the primary candidate for him pretty much most of this year. At least that's the way I was reading things. And with Zerk Thatcher likely out of the club to Port Adelaide, this becomes a pretty big area of need now for the Bombers who would need a mature key back as well. So the other thing that's come out with this story, bizarrely, it was posted, I think, on 7 AFL that uh, there has been some sort of issue with Ben Mackay's medical where there's some issue with his knee. It's pretty vague. I have no idea what to make of this. I don't want to overreact to it, but hypothetically, let's say, let's say there's something wrong actually with Ben Mackay knee. What is the impact of that? Well, it could, uh, first of all, drive down his price, which will impact North Melbourne's uh, free agency compensation pick. At the moment, we're all expecting it to be pick three. But if there's a reduced offer for him, suddenly there's a good chance that North Melbourne miss out on getting pick three. So that would be really bad for news for North Melbourne. Alternatively, both of those clubs could actually just say, no thanks, we're not going to spend a lot of money on this big investment for a player with a questionable knee. You can stay at North Melbourne. How likely is that? I don't know. I don't really want to get pulled into this shit show because I have a feeling that it's some BS story, but I'm just relaying onto you what I have heard. There is reportedly some sort of issue with Ben Mackay's knee. Personally, this has been one of the most frustrating free agency stories that I can remember. I don't know why it has taken so long for Ben Mackay to make a decision, but I suppose that will all come out in due course. And just on Brody Grundy, obviously, uh, we talked about it in my previous video where it looked like he was likely to go to Sydney. Now, now it's been reported that he's actually telling friends and family that he's on the way to the Sydney Swans at the end of this year um, after just one year at Melbourne, obviously, uh, where he had thought he had found you know a pretty good setup and he had the opportunity to stay in Melbourne. We obviously likes the lifestyle, but also so, you know, potentially form a strong one-two punch with Max Gorn. Well, he wasn't picked in either of their elimination final or qualifying final, sorry, and semi-final. Then he's going to go to a club potentially at Sydney uh, who obviously have well-reported ruck issues with Tom Hickey retiring and the Laddams experiment not really working out. So the real update there is that Brody Grundy is even more likely to end up at Sydney than he was five or six days ago. One trade rumor that has started to pick up a little bit of momentum in the last week or so 
is that of James Jordan, who uh, is obviously a premiership player at the Melbourne Demons from 2021 and interestingly qualifies as a free agent. Now, he's only been there three or four years, if I'm not mistaken, but how he qualifies for it is that he was previously delisted and re-rookied. It was something I was vaguely aware about, but uh, there you go. That's the rule. He can explore free agency, which means that a club can pick him up for free, basically. Now, the update here is that he has formally told Melbourne he would like to explore his options via free agency, and the five clubs he's been linked to are the Sydney Swans, the Western Bulldogs, Essendon, Carlton, and St. Kilda. So quite a few teams there interested in securing James Jordan. Now, he has been given a fair crack. You look at on paper, and he's been given 18 games at Melbourne, but there were eight games where he either started a sub or was subbed out. But, you know, he's, he's not a bad little player. He's played in 25 games in their premiership year and accumulated 65 games of experience. I think it'd be a really good value pickup for one of those clubs or, you know, most, most clubs. My club would probably be a good fit for him. But naturally, no one wants to go play at West Coast. But it'll be an interesting offseason here with Melbourne. They've uh, been tipped to lose Grundy, Jordan now, James Harms is also potentially on the move and uh, Tomlinson is another name that could potentially leave them. So a bit of a change going on at the Melbourne Footy Club. It's going to free up some resources and maybe they can improve their forward line somehow. But we'll, uh, we'll see with time. Okay guys, before we continue with the rest of the video, I do have an important message to share with you. As you'd know, this year, True Footy has started working with the fantasy platform called Game Day Squad. And on behalf of Game Day Squad, I have something pretty awesome to share with you. And that is, if you haven't already, that they have just launched for AFLW. That means you can start fresh with a new squad and team, and again, win weekly prizes. This is your chance to get ahead of the game and make a team for the start of the brand new season. So make sure you follow the link in the description to both creating a team on Game Day Squad and signing up to the True Footy League, which is of course completely free. Let's transform women's fantasy Aussie rules into a sensational reality. Next, we'll talk about Mabior Chol. This is another interesting story that has developed uh, since the last time I did a video, but Mabior Chol is likely to leave the Gold Coast Suns, it seems, despite having another year on his contract. The two teams most closely linked to him are firstly Adelaide, and secondly, also the Brisbane Lions. Like I said, contracted until 2025, but played just eight games this season. Obviously, Ben King came back into the side, but interestingly, like last year, he played in Ben King's absence and kicked 44 goals, and I think he's a reasonably decent AFL player. The two clubs that are linked to him in Adelaide and Brisbane are interesting interesting ones in my opinion because I would have thought both of those sides had pretty robust forward lines maybe as a contingency for Gunston who's getting older but I can't see Chol coming in being a first team player at either of those sides Adelaide's forward line in particular is really strong as well of course they may be planning for life after Tex but anyway regardless those are the two sides linked to Mubi or Chol so I think uh, it'd be a pretty cheap trade if this does happen because he only played eight games this year despite the fact that he's contracted and we know that Gold Coast aren't the most sensible at the trade table so we'll see what happens here but Chol looks like he's gonna leave the Suns the other one is Taron Thomas. I don't believe I've talked about Taron Thomas potentially leaving uh, North Melbourne this year. And I think it would be a really bad result for them if, if he did. But it's reported that Essendon are one of a number of clubs that are interested in getting Taron Thomas. Understandably, this guy had a really good back end of the year. Obviously comes with some baggage. He was a bit of a drop kick for a little while there. But you know he's talented and uh, that really shone through in the second half of this year. And I think in the last six games, he was rated the sixth best player in the competition. Forgive me, I didn't look down on my notes. It was the last month of the season he was rated as the sixth best player in the competition and really added something different to North Melbourne, who obviously want to hold on to as much talent as they can. So this would be an interesting and awkward situation for North Melbourne. Taron Thomas is a classic example of someone they don't really want to lose. Sure, I don't know what his attitude's like, and North Melbourne fans will have a better perspective of it. But in terms of talent, of a young player starting to hit his straps, this would be a genuine blow for North Melbourne if he did leave. Then we have another update on Jade Gresham as well. And this one, I am simply passing on some comments made by Ross Lyon, because I think this is the first time I've really seen some actual commentary from St Kilda indicating a desire to keep Jade Gresham. But Ross Lyons sort of banged on about how he's got a great relationship with Gresham and he'll leave a lot of the negotiation stuff to the list managers and the player managers naturally. So it'll be a little bit evasive, but made it very, very clear he wants Jade Gresham to play on next season. Obviously, Essen and Carlton have been sniffing around. There's been some mixed reports about Carlton being interested and then not interested and then Essen and sort of sniffing around now as well. But it doesn't seem now that St Kilda do have an intention to actually fight for him. As far as I'm aware, they didn't offer him a contract yet, which which uh, that was the part that I thought was curious. But Ross Lyon indicating he wants to keep him, sure, that could be trying to drive his price up. But I think they'd be crazy to let him go personally. And uh, interestingly, he sort of goes on and alludes to some strategy at the end of the year. St Kilda really want to uh, add some draft picks to what I think there's been a pretty good haul in recent years. You've got Filippo, you've got Wanganin Miller, Windhager, Owens, Caminiti's the other one. And they've indicated here through Ross Lyon's comments that they're going to go at the draft to take three or four picks at least and have highlighted a need for more midfield and a bit of 
more speed out on the outside is a direct quote. So that kind of helps people like me trying to do phantom drafts. But nonetheless, a pretty open look at uh, what St Kilda is going to be trying to do this offseason. And finally, uh, Tyler Brockman to West Coast seems to be uh, on the horizon now. Obviously, it's something I've been talking about on the channel uh, a fair bit lately, but it is now a formal trade request to West Coast rather than just wanting to head home to Western Australia. So you'd think this deal gets done. Uh, it's reported uh, out of the West Australian, I think. I can't actually remember where I got this from, but they say because Brockman is out of contract, he won't attract any compensation and that he is prepared to join the Eagles through the preseason draft. This one's odd. I think that might actually be speaking out of ignorance a little bit. I'll be very shocked if Hawthorne don't at least require a third round draft pick from West Coast. Now there's what he's actually worth versus what they'll get. Hawthorne will naturally have reasonably high expectations of what trade will actually happen. But personally, you know, this is a classic case of a young player wanting to go home for family reasons out of contract in and out of the side this year. Personal expectation, I reckon this gets done for about pick 50 odd. I, I do remember when Petrovsky Seaton was leaving Carlton and I made similar comments and they all wanted pick 30. It ended up being like pick 50 or whatever it was. And I think this will happen similarly. So you'd think this would probably going to be one of the first deals done on trade period when it does open. But that is all the updates I have for you right now, guys. Let me know in the comments if I've missed something. I probably have. There's a lot of diffuse information out there right now and, you know, trying to balance it with the draft stuff and uh, obviously the AFL finals, the most important thing out of all of it. I might have missed something, but as always, I will continue to talk about the things that you want me to talk about if you just let me know in the comment section. Appreciate all your support on the channel lately. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.